I'm from Egypt. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, work as a consultant for the Population Council. Mm -hmm. uh, the title of the paper I'm presenting uh, today is um, Access Within uh, the Higher Education System in Egypt, uh, Evidence for More Inequality of Opportunity. And this is joint work with uh, Caroline Kraft and Dr. Raghi Asad, both at the University of Minnesota. So um, I'll start uh, with talking a little bit about the motivation for the paper. Uh, first, this paper is part of a, a book, um, and the book is entitled uh, does free education in Egypt uh, lead to um, equality of opportunity? Um, the Arabic version of the book is um, already available and the uh, English version is uh, close to uh, finalization and it's produced by the Population Council and funded by Ford Foundation. Uh, so basically uh, the higher education system in Egypt is a, a free system so there is free public uh, higher education and uh, it is a meritocratic system so access to university exclusively depends on the score you get at the end of, uh, of high school. So the question we're asking in the book and in the paper, uh, um, given the, the, the nature of the system, is really um, uh, equality of uh, opportunity, is it really achieved uh, under this uh, system or, or not? Uh, so basically one chapter in the book finds that there uh, isn't much of equality of opportunity in university access even though the system is free. Uh, so we're extending uh, into this paper, um, we are looking at whether there is um, equality of opportunity in accessing different specializations or fields uh, in, in university. And w by equality of opportunity we follow the Romer uh, definition where equality of opportunity means that uh, uh, an individual is re rewarded uh, based on his efforts, uh, not based on predetermined uh, circumstances. Uh, uh, like social background, for instance. So uh, now moving to data, sample, and methodology we use in the paper. Uh, 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 we used the survey of young people in Egypt uh, in 2009. This is a nationally representative survey uh, focusing on youth. Um, uh, it was conducted by the Population Council in cooperation with the re um, uh, research arm of the Egyptian cabinet back in 2009. Uh, for the purpose of the um, analysis we do in the paper, our sample focuses on youth age uh, 20 to 29 that has ever attended uh, university. Um, and we use regression analysis in order to be able to isolate uh, the uh, if, uh, different effects of social background. Um, uh, and explanatory variables include social background, include uh, wealth um, uh, quintiles, parents' education, uh, sex um, location, like urban rural residents, um, and also regional uh, location, uh, as well as birth cohorts. Uh, also, um, in, in order to examine uh, uh, the effect uh, or the equality of opportunity in accessing different university specializations, we had to uh, group uh, the uh, specializations we have uh, in, in the survey. So basically we played around with this a bit but we ended up having uh, four groups of uh, specializations um, uh, uh, depending on the score needed to access these and also depending on you know our knowledge of uh, which um, uh, specializations are more prestigious in a way uh, from the point of view of Egyptians. So we have the groups of uh, uh, religion, law, as the uh, lowest, um, and then there is arts education, there is commerce, and the highest um, or top top field is the um, medical school and engineering. Um, and uh, I'll highlight here just the main uh, results. So basically, here uh, this graph is showing um, you know the isolation of the effect of parental wealth on which specialization, which university specialization, an individual uh, joins. Uh, so if you um, look, if you focus on the medical school and engineering because it shows the more the, the inequality, which is the purple bars, uh, you f uh, we have here four, four, uh, four groups, actually we have quintiles, there should be five, but because um, too few people in the bottom two quintiles actually go to university, we had to lump them together, so that's why we have four groups. So you can see, uh, focusing on the purple bar, that there is you know, an increase in the likelihood of joining, uh, going to medical school and engineering uh, with, uh, with wealth. It's, it's very obvious. Uh, so the result is basically that conditional on attending university and holding everything, other, um, uh, holding everything else constant, uh, comparing the top, top wealth quintiles, it's 1.5 times more likely than the fourth quintile to join medical uh, or engineering schools. And of course, the difference is more stark if we compare it to uh, people in the bottom two quintiles. So the actually the, the, the ones in the top uh, wealth quintile are four times 
as likely as those in the bottom two quintiles to go to medical or engineering. Uh, this effect is actually robust to if we take into account test scores. So you can find that at you know almost every uh, test score, uh, those uh, um, uh, individuals that come from the top uh, parental wealth quintile are more likely to join uh, medical uh, and engineering. We also looked at combining uh, the uh, effect of social backgrounds. So uh, instead of wealth, looking at the effect of wealth on other social background dimensions, so we defined two profiles. One we call the most deprived, which uh, uh, we defined as someone who comes from the lowest wealth uh, groups, uh, who has illiterate parents, who lives in the most deprived region of Egypt. Um, uh, and uh, uh, in contrast to that, we define the most privileged individual who uh, comes from the highest wealth quintile, has university educated parents, uh, and lives in urban uh, provinces in Egypt. And again, this shows uh, very stark differences in, in, in the probability of joining uh, different uh, specializations, again, focusing on uh, uh, the medical or, you know, um, uh, uh, medicine engineering, which is the, the, these uh, bars. We, uh, uh, comparing people from different profiles, we find that com the purple one is uh, for the most privileged male, while the green one is for the uh, deprived male. So you can find that, you know, the, uh, the male from most deprived background uh, has over 70% uh, chances of going to medical school, while uh, the, the one from a privileged, uh, sorry, the most deprived one has chances uh, uh, like uh, just, you know, about 5%. Mm -hmm. So that uh, even uh, uh, compounds the uh, effects. So again, at summing up, the most privileged male is 25 times more likely than the most deprived to attend medical school or engineering school groups um, and the most uh, privileged female is 13 times more likely than the most uh, 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 deprived female to attend this uh, type of school and there is a male advantage as well comparing the most uh, uh, um, privileged male is better off than uh, the most privileged female so yeah so now moving to the conclusions and policy implications uh, obviously there is strong uh, you know inequality of opportunity in accessing the different uh, fields, uh, and particularly the better uh, or top uh, university fields. And since the uh, uh, system in Egypt is free, that means that a greater share uh, of public resources actually goes to the rich at the expense uh, of the poor. Uh, so the policy implication obviously is that um, we, we encourage uh, uh, policies that would allow public universities to charge tuition instead of having uh, free education to everyone and having the uh, rich benefit from this. Uh, and at the same time, uh, uh, provide you know targeting and subsidy, subsidizing the most deserving youth that actually you know uh, cannot pay uh, pay for for their tuition. For example, through uh, 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 scholarships and loans. Uh, and this we um, uh, conclude would um, improve both equity and efficiency of the higher education system in Egypt. Thank so you.